thanks very much, Jeff, and, and good morning, everybody. It sounds like this is on loud and clear to me, so can everybody hear? Okay, great. Well, um, it's a pleasure to be here back in Nepal. It's been a long time since I've been here, and, and, and I'm just delighted, and I want to just toss in another thanks to the Nutrition Innovation Lab team, Jeff, Shivani, Liz, and others that worked so hard to pull this off. And I also want to cite Carol Levin from our side, who has been a tireless contributor to that joint effort between the Innovation Labs, the Feed the Future Innovation Labs, and, uh, and USAID. <clears throat> um, I was thinking back for how these got started, and when we first started Feed the Future, we held a meeting of the CRISPs in Uganda. I think that was in 2011. And it went really well. Um, it was a chance, it was very enlightening. The, the mission was excited to learn about all the things that some of the centrally funded research programs were doing. Um, we, we had a, a great opportunity to learn about the mission's priorities. And it just, everybody came out of that with a glow. And I remember Beth Dave Eckerson writing in saying, this is great, we didn't know you were here. So we tried to take that lesson to heart. And, and, and resolve that from now on we would try not to just be uh, working in, in the shadows but very much out in the, in the f forefront with the missions. And then um, last year we met in Uganda, I'm, I'm sorry, in Ghana. And in Ghana we, I think, expanded the meeting even more and had the regional, mi several missions from the West Africa region there. Uh, we brought in other partners beyond the innovation labs. <laughs> Uh, so we had CGIR partners, we had value chain partners, and uh, that went really well too. And I guess now I feel here in Nepal we're reaching new heights, and I guess that's a pun, uh, here next to the Himalayas. But we have seven missions with us, and it's of course the first time in Asia that we've done one of these together. So that off offers uh, new opportunities as well. And um, there's other big changes since last year when we were in Ghana. We have a whole new set of additional uh, Feed the Future innovation labs, and some of them are here. We have um, a large number of uh, external partners for the missions from the value chains, from the CGIAR, World Vegetable Center, and others, and really are delighted that um, you all are joining us. So as I said, we've had a lot of changes uh, since last year. First and foremost, I think a, a dozen or more new Feed the Future Innovation Labs being launched. Um, the other big change that I wanted to flag is the focus, one of the main focuses of the meeting this week, and that is on scaling technologies. And uh, at the end of 2012, the administrator gave a speech where he expressed his frustration with the, at the slow pace at which uh, technologies and practices emerging from our investments in R&D aren't getting to farmers. And, and he really, I think, challenged the whole community, but most especially those of us on the, the research and development side of the, of the Feed the Future initiative to really step up. Uh, and uh, I think what this has done, it, which is a really good thing, is that it has forced all of us to think much more in a very uh, analytical way about the investments missions are making, about those value chains. How can we support them? Can we support them directly? Can we perhaps provide some support that, that complements them? But in, in any case, to really look and, and engage with missions. And so I think that the fact that we're here in Nepal is a, it's a great time to be doing this because everyone is active. And on the other side, the value chains are under big pressure too. They're being told, you've got to scale, you've got to do more, your targets have to be bigger than we originally thought. So that's a big lift for them as well. So hopefully, uh, we're going to um, make some real progress this week in thinking about how, at least in the Asian context, but I, I think there actually are global lessons here uh, that, uh, that apply across the board that we can do this better. Um, so we've done some uh, really good things in this regard so far. There's been two what we call GLEES, the Global Learning and Evidence Exchange on scaling. One of them was held in Bangkok. Some of you may have been there. Uh, that was held in January. We also held one in Addis in December. Um, we also have Richard Cole and Gary Yan here. I don't know if Richard's here yet. I, 
don't see him, but he will be joining us shortly. Uh, Richard has been uh, a real, he is one of the thought leaders about scaling technology. And Gary, why don't you raise your hand? Gary is the head of our technology scaling team in the Office of Agricultural Research and Policy. And he and Richard are in the middle of a uh, three or four week trip here in Asia. Uh, visiting missions, uh, interacting with their partners, asking questions, uh, hearing their, the ideas of people who are implementing on the ground, how can we do scaling better? And so we're going to hear a lot, I think, from, from Richard and Gary uh, over the course of the week, and it's really a wonderful thing that we have them here, and so welcome to both. Um, and it's a chance for us to be, uh, to, to be part of that discussion, again, with the value chain partners here. Uh, the other big development that I wanted to flag from since last year is um, the, I would say, underscored emphasis on nutrition outcomes. And this is maybe a coincidence, but I'm not sure exactly that it also coincides with a new DAA that we have in the Bureau, Richard Green, who comes to us from the health and nutrition side of the agency. He was most recently mission director in Bangladesh, but he used to be head of the Office of Global Health. So this is a, a, a real shift, fresh eyes, I think, on the, on the Feed the Future initiative. And I think Richard is trying to light a fire under all of us to, to help us step up to the at least finding that we're on the right track towards these long-term investments in Feed the Future, the long-term goals, when there are two of them, I think you know. One is reducing poverty, but the second is reducing stunting. It's a very high lift for work in agriculture. So I think that's, that's a big change. Um, I think his position would be that we're just not doing well enough yet. Um, if Richard were here, uh, he, he, he would probably point out that it's not, the fact that we've already been able to achieve nutrition improvements and poverty reduction, but being able to at least show that we're on track. So that's, I think we're going to have some good discussions, I hope, this week to figure out, to make, to what are the things we knew, need to know to, that we are on the right path. Um, and, we, and it's critical that we know what that path looks like, and hence we're very, very happy to have the two labs from uh, the Tufts University, the one for Asia, one for Africa, that are going to help us think that through. So we're very grateful to, to, to them as well. Um, so I think those two things, uh, the scaling on the one hand and the nutrition uh, on the other, are sort of our challenge in a nutshell. And, and um, how do we contribute? I think they're connected, first of all, I'll say that too, that I think the scaling and the nutrition um, uh, impacts go together because they're all about reaching people. And, and how do we contribute to scaling? There are, are many challenges. Some of the technologies we deal with are very low cost. They're not necessarily in strong market demand. In other cases, we have very strong market demand for higher value products. So it's not going to be one size fits all. So I think we have some interesting uh, opportunities to learn. And, and then again, this question of how do we then take this learning in a way that helps us connect with the investments that missions are making through their value chain partners. Um, let's see. Okay, and then uh, we also want to focus on, I think, the, the whole question of this better linkages between programs, and, and, not, and not just, of course, with our value chain partners and with the, um, with the CGIR partners and our ARP, the, uh, our office research partners, but also with the national partners. And I know that's all of you work with national partners in one way or another, and I, I, I know we have some good representation from the Nepali side here and, and perhaps from some other uh, regional partners as well, so we're delighted about that. Um, and then I know that the other thing, if my, if my colleague Julie Howard, our chief scientist in BFS, were here, she would also want me to underscore that she would see this meeting as a first step in uh, the portfolio review process. We're about to launch this week into reviewing each mission, each focus country in Feed the Future will undergo a portfolio review over the next six weeks. And those are going to highlight areas for follow-up and support 
from our office from and jointly with the country strategies and implementation office and also with the markets and policy office all three of them uh, the the main program offices let's say in um, in, in in the Bureau for food security um, <clears throat> so in uh, I guess the final thing I wanted to say is that I can't think of a better place to be doing this than um, in Nepal. Uh, Beth Dunford, as uh, you know, is the uh, mission director here. Beth has been one of the real architects of Feed the Future. Uh, she was our de 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 uh, senior deputy assistant administrator prior to Richard Green's coming in and when she came out here to take up the mission director role here. And I think um, Nepal is an excellent, quote, laboratory for us. You're working on high value things. You're working on some staple commodities. You have space for fish and livestock in your portfolio. There's a whole range of things. So, so we're in a great place to be thinking about how all these uh, potential innovations can fit together. So uh, I'll, I'll leave it at that now, but I uh, just want to thank you all for being here, and we look very much towards working with you over the next few days, and then very much in the months and the, the years ahead. Thank you. To learn more, please visit agrilinks.org and feedthefuture.gov.